while fiat currencies are always mismanaged into oblivion, uh, they always revert to, to zero, as Voltaire once said. Tuesday, June 18th, 2024, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. We're going to look at the central bankers and gold today. In my opinion, the, the central bankers have no clothes. <laughs> and you will see what I mean by that. There's a lot of, of course, uh, fallacy about gold. And we're going to look into that too, uh, about who really controls gold. But before uh, we go further, just wanted to thank you for the interest in the channel. And... Uh, if you enjoy my content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the little notification bell to be notified of all my new videos. And make sure you hit the like button if you enjoy uh, my videos too. And if you want to support the channel, there are different ways you can do it. And you can find out about that below in the description of the video. Uh, very few people... Uh, if you go out and about or if you are with friends or at a, a party or something and you start talking about gold, no one really says, well, gold is money. And uh, very few people know the importance of gold as money and as a monetary asset. Uh, yeah, a lot of people think of it as a commodity and that it's risky and they think that the dollar is money and the pound is money. But uh, when you do your history, uh, learn your history about money and currency, you realize that it all started uh, with gold and silver to some extent as well, of course, a big extent. But I'm going to focus on gold today because uh, there's a lot of uh, misconceptions uh, surrounding gold, especially with the, the new uh, mania that we've seen for the last uh, 15 years or so with cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, uh, and, and others. And, and I want to clarify a few things. Uh, the first one is about decentralization. And there are many who say, uh, well, the central bankers are in charge. Yeah, uh, I kind of agree. They're in charge of setting uh, the price for gold, mainly because they've organized themselves into a cartel to to manipulate the price and you if you want to find out more about that i have a playlist about precious metals manipulation but what i want to focus on today and i'm going to refer to this book here which was published by uh the german central bank ironically uh the bundesbank in 2018 when uh they were kind of uh completing or doing a campaign to placate the German public because the German public uh, had been uh, pushing for the Bundesbank to uh, repatriate a lot of uh, the German uh, Republic's gold from places like the New York Fed and the Bank of France. And by 2018, they had completed the repatriation and, and they published this great book and I recommend it. Uh, it's got great uh, photographs and it uh, it's all about gold and its history, not just as jewelry and, and money, but also as a reserve asset. And that's what I want to jump to uh, here on uh, this chapter about gold as a reserve asset. And this is when you realize how important and how scarce and rare gold is. And uh, I know that uh, all all the gold that's been mined in history, most of it, 99.9%, .9 is still around. But we're going to look at that as well. Significance and perception of gold at the present time. Gold is a precious metal which scientists have placed at number 79 of the periodic table of the elements with the symbol AU for aurum, its Latin name. It has a density of 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter and melts at 1064.18 degrees Celsius, but does not boil until 2800 degrees Celsius. For a gold bar 
to meet the specs of the London Bullion Market Association or the LBMA, it must additionally weigh between 350 and 430 uh, fine troy ounces, have a fineness of at least uh, 995 over 1,000, bear certain hallmarks, be within recommended dimensions, and be of good outer appearance. Since humans first started prospecting for and processing gold, roughly 187,200 tons of it have been extracted from the earth. So this was about six years ago, and uh, I think uh, since then another 20,000 have been, um, fa you know, taken out of the ground and processed. So we're at about uh, 210,000 metric tons by now. If one were to melt all of this gold into a single cube, its edges would be uh, around 21.3 meters long. So that's about 65 feet. Not that long. <laughs> if the German gold held by the Deutsche Bundesbank were similarly melted down into a single cube, its edges would be approximately 5.6 meters long. And here's the uh, interesting part about decentralization. Nearly half, approximately 48% of global stocks of gold have been made into jewelry. Uh, Around 18% are being held by central banks or governments. Around 21% are used as a form of investment. So that's the uh, stackers, right? The gold uh, coins and, and bars. And approximately 14% are used for other purposes, such as industrial products. So if you add uh, the amount of jewelry, uh, the percentage 48, to the amount of uh, investment by the public, you get 69%, almost 70%. And that's why I don't think gold is that uh, cent uh, centralized. It's very decentralized. And the central banks only control 18% of it. Uh, uh, yes, granted, they're still in control of setting its purchasing power, i.e. its price. And the reason they've been doing that is because They've been trying to keep this uh, fiat currency debt-based system going and uh, a rising, uh, quickly rising gold and silver price, yeah, is a barometer uh, of the fraudulent nature uh, of the system where they can just create uh, these reserves, monetary uh, fiat currency reserves out of thin air with no effort. I, I mean... <laughs> It's much easier to, to just type uh, $10 billion than to go out there uh, and risk a lot of capital prospecting and digging uh, and then processing the gold, right? And um, I venture to say that uh, when it's all said and done, when people realize that the central bankers have no clothes, uh, the purchasing power uh, of not just gold and silver, but all real uh, hard assets or things that are uh, that take effort to to extract to process to produce are going to be uh, uh, precious they're going to be worth uh, so much in terms of these fraudulent uh, fiat currencies which are backed by the government uh, debt of course and uh, there's no way they can keep this uh, debt bubble going uh, they're certainly going to try to to do so, but uh, I think they're at the end of, of the rope, and that's why I think it's so important. Uh, if you're holding a, a lot of fiat currency in terms of savings, uh, and I'm not telling you to just convert all of it into gold and silver, but I, I think it's very very prudent to have some kind of insurance because gold and silver have maintained their purchasing power for millennia. While fiat currencies are always mismanaged into oblivion, uh, they always revert to, to zero, as Voltaire once said. But let's continue here. However, the remaining global gold deposits are finite. In its 2016 annual report, the U.S. Geological Survey 
estimated these to be around 57,000 tons. Uh, the amounts involved seem unimaginably large when one considers that one ton of rock contains on average only a few grams of gold. According uh, to the World Gold Council, the world's oceans are estimated to hold about 15,000 tons of gold. However, it is questionable whether it will ever be economically viable to extract this gold. If gold production continues at the rates seen in the past few years of more than 3,000 tons annually, the underground deposits for which mining is economically viable will have been brought above ground in approximately 20 years time. Uh, that's not very long. This book was published and this data uh, came out in 2018, two years after the uh, previous data that I mentioned. So we've got about 14, 15 years of uh, relatively uh, easy to find and extract uh, gold. Uh, and it's not that long. It's finite. I'm sure uh, human ingenuity and technology will probably find more gold after that, but it's getting harder and harder. To conclude then, um, yeah, gold is not as centralized as most people think. As we saw, 70% of all gold that's above ground and has ever been mined is held basically in jewelry and investment. So by the public and the central banks only control 18% of it. And that's why I think, uh, yeah, they're not as important even though they make make it seem that they are and uh they're only in control of the paper price for now i would say but the other uh, topic i i wanted to cover uh about gold is the the stock to flow uh, ratio of gold and what's the stock to flow ratio well it's quite simple and it's what makes uh, gold very stable over the centuries and millennia in terms of purchasing power, um, rel uh, purchasing power relative to goods, services, and everything else. And it makes it money because most commodities, uh, their stock to flow ratio is very short a period of time. It's like a year or so because they're consumed. So what's the stock to flow ratio? Well, when you take uh, the number of 200,000 metric tons, uh, all the stock of gold above ground, and you divide it by about roughly 3,500 tons, or 3,650, which is what was roughly produced last year, and you get a, a 58, uh, number of 58 years, which means that if you uh, stop producing gold, now, there'd still be 58 years of um, mine production above ground. And of course, that gold would never disappear because gold is not really consumed and it's easily uh, recycled uh, gold from jewelry into money and uh, many other things. Uh, so That's what makes uh, gold very stable, even though we have seen in the last 25 years or so the price of gold go, go up substantially. But don't forget, it's gone up substantially uh, versus a, a fiat currency system uh, made up of fiat currencies that has abused, been abused by the central bankers and politicians because they've uh, created all this uh, funny currency or funny money out of thin air. They've uh, indebted uh, nations, they've indebted um, the, whole, the whole system. And uh, that's why it's so important for them to keep control of the price of gold and silver, because uh, they're both barometers or, uh, of the cheating that they do through the, the fiat currency. And I think um, eventually, the truth will come out and people will realize that the fiat currencies are just a, an illusion. And, and that's why I think it's important to have uh, some kind of uh, insurance outside the system. And by outside the system, I mean, you, you need to hold uh, other things uh, than uh, fiat currency instruments like cash 
or bank deposits or government bonds. And uh, again, yeah, very difficult to find gold, very rare. And uh, the resources are becoming more and more finite. And uh, it, it's not surprising that we're seeing uh, this geopolitical uncertainty, uh, the fact that uh, the West is desperate to gain control of Eurasia and Africa again, but I think they're going to lose out. And, and why is that? Why is it important to gain control of Eurasia and Africa? Well, they, they're the biggest land masses, and they've got uh, a lot of resources that haven't been uh, exploited yet, gold being one of them. So uh, I'm going to stop right here today. Uh, we're not going to go over the markets this morning. They're fairly quiet. Gold and silver are down slightly, but I'm not concerned. And uh, with that, I'm going to wish you all a very good day. Take care. Bye.